Hello, my name is Jane Eisner. I'm editor of The Forward. At the end of August, I was invited by Ruth Messenger, the president and CEO of the American Jewish World Service, to accompany her on a fact-finding trip to Haiti. Since AJWS and other Jewish organizations have given almost $14 million in Jewish money to Haiti since the earthquake, I thought it'd be really important to try to get a sense of how that money is being spent and what is going on uh, in a country that's just a couple of hours from our shores and yet hosts the greatest poverty in the hemisphere. The first thing you notice in Port-au-Prince is that the landscape is just pure rubble. The presidential palace, the government buildings around the palace look like they might have looked on January the 13th, the day after the earthquake, um, with one glaring exception, and that is that there are camps for displaced people everywhere, including in the major park right across from the presidential palace. And most crucially right now, there are an estimated one and a half million people who are displaced, living uh, in tents in camps all over Port-au-Prince and all over the countryside. The camps basically consist of tents that were donated by uh, USAID, UNICEF, uh, the Canadian government, the Mormons. You see this very, very battered place um, that certainly had more poverty than anything I had ever witnessed. I mean, people living in tents right on the median strip of highways. Um, Some of the camps are tolerable, if you will. Some are clearly lacking in sewage facilities. They pose great dangers, especially to women, um, because there's so little security in these tents. I was told that some women will wear five pairs of jeans to make it harder for someone to rape them. I was able to go into some of the tents and interview people there, um, and they just seemed resigned to it. One of the uh, sad consequences of the quake is people are now afraid to go back to their homes because they're afraid that um, this is going to happen all over again. So they've set up a kind of alternative communal structure in the camps. Uh, There are um, elected leaders. Um, In some places, there are activities for the children or schools. These are oftentimes sponsored by NGOs, and everyone there wants to work. Uh, We even saw a class in becoming a manicurist and a pedicurist, which might seem a little odd, but actually was marvelous to see because that's something that Haitian women like, and um, it's certainly a marketable skill. What was hopeful about this trip was to see the creativity and the resilience of so many people, especially those working in grassroots organizations, where with a little funding from AJWS or some of the dozens of other Jewish or Israeli organizations there, are really trying to uh, improve their lives and the lives of their friends and families around them. So we visited a rural school in a community called Ivoire. In it, we met with uh, a large group of people who had come from all over the countryside to tell us their stories. They had um, a committee for health care and for economics. They had set up a micro-lending program. We saw this marvelous skit that they put on to try to promote the use of filtered water. Um, So there's a lot of self-reliance and a a lot of work that's being done from the ground up uh, with very, very little monetary support. Uh, It's really quite devastating and in a certain way quite remarkable.